good day everyone and welcome to this lectures that we are continuing on settling and sedimentation and overall in the previous lectures we uh, discussed about the various settling uh, zones or behaviors which may be observed in a water or waste water treatment plant and uh, we observed that there are different types of behaviors which are possible and that include discrete settling hindered settling flocculent settling or compressive settling so all these zones are possible and it is possible that within a wastewater treatment plant within a settling chamber any one of the, the behavior is also occurring and in addition to these behaviors we uh, tried to understand the different equations and the theories that are used for design of all these uh, basins which may be operating under these behaviors so continuing with the previous lectures uh, in today's lecture we will try to understand what are the various non ideal behaviors which are possible and which we have to take care during the design of actual uh, settling or sedimentation basin so uh, there are many non ideal lts are there and that we have to account and then later on in the today's lecture itself we will try to understand what are the basic design criteria which have to be considered in various zones of settling or various zones of sedimentation basin and all those important considerations we have to take care so uh, we will start with the non ideal behavior of settling tank so any settling tank it may be horizontal it may be up flow uh, type so all these settling tanks have different behaviors non ideal behavior and uh, which may be observed during the operation and these non ideal behavior may be because of turbulence because of inlet energy dissipation because actually at the inlet the amount of energy uh, along with the flow is higher as compared to at the in the settling tank itself so that inlet energy dissipation then the density currents so because of density difference or otherwise some currents may be inside the inside the flow currents may be there inside the different zones so that density currents and wind effects these are the major effect uh, reasons which actually account for non ideal behavior of flow of the liquid inside various zones in the settling tank along with these effects outlet currents and sludge equipment movement also cause non ideality of the behavior in different zones so all these effects turbulence inlet energy dissipation density current and wind effects all these uh, non ideal behavior causing things we are going to understand little bit more uh, now starting with the turbulence so suppose uh, we are assuming a discrete settling particle and in this condition what we assume is that uh, uh, in the basin it has a uniform horizontal velocity in the settling zone now this if we consider this assumption uh, this will this will be like uh, assuming that laminar flow conditions are there inside that settling zone now uh, laminar flow condition means that the reynolds number is in the range of 1 now in actual condition when uh, the settling is actually occurring this is rarely possible and uh, it will be very difficult to achieve the reynolds number equal to one condition so under this condition the assumption which is there it may not be true so what we have to do is that we should try to measure the turbulence by measuring the reynolds number and and that reynolds number or the turbulence may be influenced by viscous effect may be influenced by the internal flows or boundary layer flows so all these factors may account for variation in the reynolds number so turbulence may be there the actual laminar flow condition may not be observed in most of the conditions in addition to that uh, we should also measure the froud numbers because it is influenced froud number is like factor which account for the gravity 
and it will be correct for free surface flows. So, all these Froude number and Reynolds number are very important parameters that should be measured and they account for giving uh, like non-ideal behavior and uh, which may be observed by measuring these numbers. So, we will we'll solve some problems and in that we will try to measure this Reynolds number and Froude number and understand their uses. Now, then the second the second parameters which affects the uh, non-ideal behavior or ideal behavior is inlet energy dissipation. Now, the flow must be uniform across the cross sectional area of the tank as it enters the settling zone. So, uh, this is a one of the essential requirements in the settling zone. Now, the inlet pipe which carries the solids to the clarifier is ob often it is designed at much higher velocities, so that the particles do not settle in the pipe itself. So, that means, the inlet pipe always have very high velocity as compared to that in the settling zone or settling chamber. Now, this high velocity has to be reduced and to prevent the jet effect in the basin otherwise the uh, non idealty will be more, uh, but uh, this cannot be reduced very sufficiently and more, most often we use like target baffle and, and this is used as a solution to provide a diffuser wall or something like a diffuser wall which is considered as a target baffle or an inlet baffle may be there. So, diffuser wall or inlet baffle may be used to reduce the velocity and make the flow uniform. But may not be effective up to a level which is desirable and because of that non idealty happens in the settling basin. Uh, then the second uh, parameter is the density current. Density current uh, is like it happens uh, because of the effect of various uh, effects, it may be because of the variation in the density, it may be also because of the variation in temperature. So, temperature variation changes in solid concentration all may cause the variation in density and that density may lead to density current and density current actually leads to the short circuiting. So, short circuiting is the term which is used to describe the effect of density currents on the settling tank performance and short circuiting occurs when the flow through the tank is not uniform. So, we do not have the flow through the tank is not uniform and under that condition short circuiting may happen. A current carries the particle matter to the effluent launders before actually particle can settle. So, in place of that means for that uh, particulate matter or that particle which is which is getting short circuited it has uh, it, it does not have that much detention time that it can settle actually it leads the effluent launders before actually settling down. So, density currents short circuiting they have lot of effect and these may be because of temperature differentials and changes in solid concentrations as well. Now, the suppose we add warm water to a sedimentation basin. So, it is possible that somehow that there is a difference at some time it is only colder conditions are prevailing and now we are adding a warm water to the sedimentation basin or the warming of the surface water in the basin uh, containing cooler wa uh, water uh, may occur because of various regions and if any of these occurs there will always be short circuiting since the warmer water will always rise to the surface and reach the launders in the fraction uh, as compared to the theoretical detention time. So, whatever is the theoretical detention time, it will reach the launders before that. So, that means, the settling will not occur. Similarly, if the cooler water is added somehow. So, cooler water will tend to dive down and flow along the bottom and rise at the tank outlet only. So, this is possible. So, both warm water and uh, cooler water may lead to density differentials and because of density that differential currents density currents may be there. 
similarly because of the variation in like cooler water warmer water so temperature density currents can be caused by other measures also like exposure to the sunlight so uh, i'd like during night time it may be different during day time it may be different similarly changing the mixing ratio of two or more water sources so it may be possible that there are two or more water sources and one uh, to have difference in temperature also so if the mixing ratio changes so the this temperature density current will arise now uh, there is a possibility that uh, we are changing the water from one source to another so then also because the concentration difference may be there temperature difference may be there and because of that also temperature density currents may arise uh, similarly shifting the reservoir intake elevation that at what elevation we are taking the water into the reservoir so all those parameters affect the temperature density currents and they have lot of effect on the non idealty behavior now similarly a rapid increase in the influent solid concentration from floods uh, it this this uh, may occur from floods or high winds on the lakes and reservoirs will cause a higher density in the influent than in the basin so it is possible that suddenly very high solid concentration is coming in the influent and that is with respect to what is present in the basin so this will cause it to plunge as it enters the basin so all the solids will try to settle down very quickly and flow along the bottom and rise at the tank outlet so uh, this will again create a differential now similarly uh, for taking care of this intermediate diffuser valves have also been used many times so we'll discuss these things more in the design considerations now in addition to density differentials we have wind effects also so large open tanks which may be there they are always susceptible to induced currents and in sufficiently strong winds uh, wave waves may also occur at the top of the tank so this is possible and if this happens or otherwise also an underflow current in the opposite direction to the surface uh, current gets created and uh, this will cause the short circuiting in addition to that uh, the short circuiting it may lead to scouring of the already settled particulate matter from the sludge zone because the wind effect so at the top the there may be a wave in one direction so at the bottom of the lake there will be wave, there will be some movement in the opposite direction so that underflow current may cause scouring of that uh, settled particulate matter from the sludge zone so uh, this is there so one of the design solutions that is taken care of is that limiting the length of the tank and placing some wave breakers along the tank surface so these are some of the design solutions which are there with respect to taking care the wind effects now we'll start with the, the actual design and what are the parameters that we have to take care then a, in a like a rectangular sedimentation basins so uh, some of the important design considerations now we are going to discuss one by one in each and every zone now generally what will happen that uh, for removing the redundancy redundancy of one of the uh, if suppose we are using only one tank so to take care we always design any settling basin with two tanks minimum so two tanks are always provided they may be placed together in parallel so they may be like two basins may be there so like this is a bigger basin so two basins with a common wall may be there so this is one basin this is second basin so we are having two uh, basins in parallel so uh, this is always we take care that we actually design in most often at least two tanks are used now uh, this helps in providing flexibility in operation over a wide range of flow rate so if flow rate is very less so we can use only one basin also suppose at any time one of the basins is out so we can take 
use the second basin at least. So, uh, this all these redundancy factors may be taken care of if we use at least two tanks. Four tanks or higher may be used, but uh, this will result in unacceptable capital cost etcetera. So, certainly cost is the most important factor based upon which we design that how many tanks we are going to use for this, uh, actual uh, settling. Now, uh, this uh, figure we have already previously in the previous lectures also we have seen. So, we will be discussing each of the zones. So, when the flow enters and when it leaves from the effluent weir. So, under this condition now there are four uh, zones which are possible. One is inlet zone, then we have a settling zone, then we have outlet zone and then the sludge zone. So, now we are going to discuss each of these zones and their design considerations, important design considerations in detail. Now, within this we have perforated baffle, we have target baffles also which are very important, then we have weir also. So, all these factors we are uh, going to discuss little bit in detail. Now, in the inlet zone, the preferred arrangement is, a, is that a direct connection is there between the flocculent basin and the settling tank. So, uh, this is what is the preferred ar arrangement. A diffuser wall between the two tanks is designed using the same procedure that is used for baffle walls in the flocculent tank. So, we can use the same technique. Now, when the flocculated water is piped to the settling tank, uh, the common flow velocity which is used is in this range from 0 0.15 to 0 0.6 meter second. So, this is the common flow velocity in the uh, pipe which is connected from flocculent tank to the settling tank. So, this is possible. So, this is the flow velocity range generally we use. In addition, this velocity must be reduced and the flow has to be spread evenly over the cross section of the settling tank. So, this, this is one of the important parameters if we can do it well, uh, we can reduce the non-ideal behavior. Now, the diffuser wall is the most effective way to accomplish this and the diffuser wall is placed approximately 2 meter downstream of the inlet pipe. So, this is the diffuser wall which is placed. So, already we have seen the diffuser wall or percolated baffle. So, this is there. Now, the head loss through the holes. So, uh, this for this also it is generally taken care that it should be 4 to 5 times the velocity head uh, of the approaching flow. So, uh, this is tentatively kept in this range. So, this is there. Now, in addition the port velocities typically must be around 0.2 to 0.3 meter per second for sufficient head loss. The holes are in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 meter in diameter and uh, is they are spaced at a distance of 0.25 to 0.60 meter apart. So, this is there and uh, so these are the some of the important things that are taken care of and there are evenly distributed all these holes are evenly distributed on the uh, wall. The lowest port or hole should be around 0 0.6 meter above the basin floor. So, this is also taken care and uh, so, so that the flow becomes more uniform. Now, after the inlet zone the flow will come to the settling zone. So, these are the important considerations which are there. Uh, for settling zone. Now, there is a practical minimum depth which is required for sludge removal uh, and equipment. So, that depth may be calculated from the previous, previous lectures, we can tentatively calculate from that also. And uh, the settling velocity is one of the parameters, we have to also take care of the horizontal velocity. So, all those things are taken into account in calculating the depth. Depth is a controlling parameter to limit flow through the velocity and scour of the particle from the sludge blanket. So, both have to be taken care that what should be the depth so that the uh, scouring of the particle is stopped. The horizontal flow velocity must be controlled to avoid undue turbulence. 
so this undue turbulence back mixing and scouring of the particle from the sludge zone this we have to take care so horizontal flow velocity and depth these become very important parameters for settling zone now for this checking whether these are under the uh, uh, under the limit and we don't have all these issues we have to check the reynolds number and froud number uh, that can be used for checking whether turbulence and back mixing is occurring or not occurring so all these uh, can be checked now within this the reynolds number can be determined by this equation and which is like reynolds number is equal to vf into rh divided by nu and where uh, reynolds number itself is dimension f vf is the average horizontal velocity fluid velocity in the tank in meter per second and rh is the hydraulic radius the so, hydraulic radius is the ratio of cross sectional area divided by the weighted parameter so this we have to understand then kinematic viscosity is there and kinematic viscosity itself can be found out from dynamic viscosity divided by the density of fluid so this is also uh, one of the parameter here so through this we can find out the reynolds number similarly we can find out the froud number also and which is given by this equation which is like vf square divided by grh so vf and rh already have been defined in the previous so vf is already defined and rh is also defined so we have this and g is the acceleration due to gravity now recommended values of this froud number reynolds number are given here so reynolds number should always be less than 20000 so this uh, this is there and the froud number should be greater than 10 raised to minus 5 a large re indicates high degree of turbulence but it has to be limited within uh, the lower the reynolds number better it is and the low froud number indicates that water flow is not dominated by horizontal flow and back mixing may be occurring so this we have to take care that uh, this froud number has to be greater than 10 raised to minus 5 so this is there now after settling we have outlet zone the outlet zone is composed of like launders are uh, running parallel to the length of the tank so uh, this is there and the weirs uh, uh, after the settling zone they should cover at least one third or one half of the basin length so that that has to be taken so we can see the weir here and we have the notch here now uh, this has to they and these weirs are evenly spaced across the width of the tank so this we see okay and if the baffles are used suppose a lander is placed midway between the baffles so that this is another consideration that has to be taken care in the outlet zone uh, during the design now uh, there are other uh, there are certain advantages of using long weirs so these advantages are like a gradual reduction of flow velocity towards the end of the tank so this is possible so that is if we use long weir it is possible then we have we can minimize the wave action from wind so we are taking taken care of the wind also you by using the long weirs also we can collect the clarified water in the middle of the tank when the density flow occurs if anything uh, like this occurs so this is also taken care of the long weirs the water level in the tank is controlled by the end wall or the overflow weirs so uh, this is also one of the important things that we should remember while designing the settling basin now in the uh, outlet zone we have v notch weirs which are attached to the launders and they they and broad crested weirs are also may be attached at the end wall so this is there sometimes we use submerged orifices may be used on the launders and they have been used to avoid the break up of fragile flocks uh, when conventional rapid sand filters have to be used later on so this is good if the uh, suppose we have a fragile flock and if the flock is bigger so we have more chances of filtering it in the rapid sand filter so this is possible to avoid this we can use the submerged orifices also 
a for high rate filter designs which have to be used after the settling basin. There is a less concern about the breaking the flocks because the high rate filters require a small strong flock and so it, this consideration may not be there for high rate uh, filter design, but for allag simple rapid sand filter etc. Uh, submerged orifices may be preferred. Now, in addition to this at the bottom we have sludge zone. So, in selecting the depth sludge zone is the most important thing after the settling basin. Now, in selecting the depth of the sedimentation basin an allowance of 0 0.6 to 1 meter is made for the sludge accumulation and sludge removal equipment. So, that will be there at the bottom. If the overflow rate de is design is based upon the pilot studies then the depth of the pilot settling tank column used to develop the data may be selected as the depth of the tank. So, that may be taken from the directly from the pilot settling column itself. Now, uh, sometimes we may use an additional 0 0.6 to 1 meter uh, to the column depth to account for the sludge zone. So, this is also possible. So, sludge zone is very important and to facilitate easy sludge removal the bottom of the tank is sloped towards the sludge hopper and head end of the tank. So, we can like here in the figure you may have seen. So, this is slanted and this is the sludge hopper which is there. So, we have to see that uh, this is slanted and we can easily remove the sludge whenever desirable. So, this is there. So, this is what is written here in the. Now, there are different types of sludge collector. So, one once it moves to the sludge collector we may have different types of sludge collector. So, chain and flight collectors are there. So, they are commonly applied to remove the sludge. Uh, the length is approximately 60 meter or maybe others also. The traveling bridge collector is for extremely long tank. Then the cross collectors 1 to 1.2 meter wide at the top and 0.6 to 1.2 meter deep at the bottom. So, any of these types of collection systems may be used depending upon the design. Now, going further there are some typical design criteria which are used for horizontal flow rectangular sedimentation basins. So, that we have to uh, these values are given here. So, uh, these values are highly helpful in design of any sedimentation basin in particular the rectangular sedimentation basin which is having a horizontal flow. Now, for the inlet zone some of the parameters are like distance to diffuser wall should be 2 meter approximately, diffuser hole diameter should be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 meter in the settling zone. Uh, the overflow rate should be around 40 to 70 meter cube per day per meter square. The side water depth may be 3 to 5 meter, the length may be 30 meter, 80 meter, it, it varies a lot. So, there are different types. So, we may use a fixed type of also and we may increase that length also. Now, the width is in 0.3 increments generally it is taken. So, 6 meter is maximum per train. So, for 24 meter like 3 trains per drive. So, these are some of the ideas which have been used in the sedimentation basin. Then the parameter L by W and L by D ratio. So, generally L by W is taken more than 4 is to 1 and L by D may be 15 is to 1 or something like this. So, velocity is in the range of 0.005 to 0 0.018 meter per second. Reynolds number sorry this is 10 raised to minus 5. So, Reynolds number has to be uh, less than 20,000 and fraud number has to be more than 10 raised to minus 5. So, this is there and in the outlet zone uh, we have some considerations which are there. The launder length has to be around one third to one half of the length of the basin and we are loading may be around 150 to 250 meter cube per day per meter. So, this is there. In the sludge zone the depth is 0.6 to 1 meter, the slope is 1 is to 600 
and the sludge collector speed uh, is from 0.3 to 0.9 meter per minute. So, the, these are the some of the parameters are the typical design values which are used in the actual design of the sedimentation basin and all these parameters uh, if we take care of these parameters generally a good very good sedimentation basin can be designed. Uh, there are in this today's lecture we studied regarding the non ideal behavior which is possible in any sedimentation basin. So, we found that there are uh, four parameters which may be there and it may include like wind effect, turbulence the and the density difference. So, there are many parameters which are possible and which may cause non ideality of the behavior in different zones in the settling tank. And in addition we try to learn some of the basic aspects of the design in various zones including inlet zone, settling zone, outlet zone and sludge zone. So, in the next lectures we will be continuing with the design and we will try to solve some problems with respect to design and then there are new types of filters which have come into picture and these include like high rate filters. So, now the requirement of filtration has and high rate settlers. So, in the requirement of high rate settlers has increased because the we have to uh, we have to treat more amount of water in lesser time. So, new types of settlers have come into picture. So, we will study those in the next lecture. So, we end today's lecture. Thank you very much.